this is a, another case where the story is way more confusing than the math. Uh, we've got this weird curve. We've got this story about the momentum. But when they say, uh, what is the average rate of change? That's just code for slope. So yeah, it's a curve, but they want the slope between these two points, between the two and the six. So we just pretend for the sake of like calculating it, that it's a, um, a straight line. And then we're just using our slope formula, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So let's just be clear what the points are, right? It's two comma six and six comma eight. So uh, I'm gonna do uh, six minus eight over two minus six. I know that's gonna have some double negatives, that's fine. Negative uh, six, oopsie, mm -hmm. this is why I like scrap paper. As soon as I wrote that, Oh, no, 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 that was right, that was right. Six minus eight over two minus six. Okay, that's two or negative two over negative four. That is negative one half uh, or positive one half because the two negatives make a positive. So there you go. So you can bubble one half or 0 0.5. Um, yeah, well, I, I'll keep that almost mistake in there. That's, that's the actual answer. But I think this goes to show um, one of the most important things, if, you're, if you constantly make careless mistakes on the test, you need to start to keep track of what kinds of careless mistakes you make. The one you almost saw me make here, uh, either I, was, I thought I had flipped the x and the y, that I put the x coordinates on the top, and then I almost lost you know, a negative. The double negative is positive. Those are things I do all the time. I always mess up slope formula. It's just a lot of negatives and like a lot of numbers and they all have to go in the precise place. So it's very difficult to just keep track of it all, especially when you're trying to move fast because the timer is ticking. So I know that I suck at calculating slope using this formula. I know it, it happens all the time. I mess up lots of things, I'm good at math, but this particular thing just keeps coming up again and again. It's still maybe only about 5% of the time that I need to work with slope formula that I actually make a mistake with it. But 5% is high enough that on the SAT, you know, that could cost me a lot of points. So what have I done? I've just remembered that this particular careless mistake is one that I am susceptible to. So that any time I do slope, I kind of just pause in between every single step and just rethink, did I do it right? And you saw me do that in real time. You, I paused, I looked back to what my numbers were, I thought for a second I did it wrong, but at least the pause let me think about it again and make sure. So you have to incorporate those steps into your process. It didn't really add too much time. I'm not like wasting another minute overthinking a question. I just know that this is a place where an extra three seconds is worthwhile because it might save me a full question. That's 10, 20 points on the test. It's worth it. So you have to find where your weak spots are. What kinds of careless mistakes do you tend to make? Maybe they involve fractions. Maybe they involve slope, distribution. I don't know. Some people don't know the times tables well enough. You know, maybe you get eight times four and nine times four confused all the time. So every time that you have to do one of those, then just think it through. Take that extra pause and really try to emphasize checking your work as you go when you do those kinds of steps. Because if you can catch it there, then you don't go wasting time doing all the work only to be wrong and then have to go back to the start. Trying to check as you go for those careless mistake weak points, really important for getting good at math and obviously improving your SAT score. So I'm kind of glad I almost made a mistake here. It's a good opportunity for you to learn something about how you do math as well.